Here's something you can't do. Let me, I'll give you a very simple thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a joke line, a tagline. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Right? You've, you've heard mm -hmm. that line. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Rueful reflection of a person who's just kind of a cropper in some way. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that's actually a wonderful thing to be able to say and mean. If you can say and mean, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time, that means that you can recall how it seemed then and recall how it seemed, and you can compare it to what you know now. Now, that's a level of self-knowledge and reflection and knowledge of your own past and of your own past thinking that's really potent. It's, it's, it's the key to debugging. It's the key to improving to self-improvement sure. and functional. it's functional. That's a really big, important functionality. Right. Transplant computers don't have it. Okay, well, neither do lizards. If it's they safe. did, yeah, then they would have. The then, then I wouldn't be confident that they weren't conscious. Okay, fine. Then they would have the experience of ruefulness. But, and of but, being able to reflect on uh, their past I mean, past lizards thoughts. presumably don't have ruefulness either, but, but you right. agree that lizards may experience pain. So why, in one sense, I mean, and I mean, in one sense, no. That is, that is, I think it's, see, I actually don't agree to any sort of categorical statement like that because I don't think you or I have figured out what we jointly mean by that. I think, well, I think this is one of the problems that people have with consciousness is that they, they point to, they allude to supposed sensations and they think they know what they mean. The famous phrase, what is it like to be a right. bat? Thomas Nagel's phrase. And I don't think, I think in spite of the popularity of that phrase, mm -hmm. it is, it's a wild card. It, people don't know what they are agreeing to when they agree about the question that what we're going to talk about is what is it like to be a bat? Okay, but leave aside the details of what it's like to be something. You agree that it is like something to be you, right? Yeah. And that means you're conscious. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that seems like a good working definition. And it leads me to, to something else you've written that, that points to kind of this difference of worldview. You write, quote, Nagel claims that no amount of third person knowledge could tell us what it is like to be a bat. And I flatly deny that claim. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you think that there is some amount of scientific study of bats and echolocation and everything mm -hmm. else that could lead me to know exactly what it's like mm -hmm. to be a bat? Yeah. To know it fully? Yeah, as much, well, fully. Um, well, maybe we diminishing you diminishing returns. It. Okay, so you can never know exactly, you well, agree you can never know exactly what it's like to be a bat. I can never, you can never know exactly everything about a grain of sand. Well, in principle That's the only, you could. In no, principle, everything, everything, everything? Uh, from the, you know, everything about that grain of sand from the Big Bang to the heat death of the universe. Oh, the whole history of it? That's in principle, every... in principle yeah. yes, you could follow the molecules. Mm. Um, okay, then in principle you could know everything it's like to be a bat. But you realize why most people think you just couldn't. I, 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 mean, I mean... I realize that many people think you just couldn't. But I think that's a I think that's a shibboleth. I don't think that's I think that's an but, intuition but I mean, the, which is which is uh, honored by tradition, but has nothing much going for it. But you agree that I can never know really what it's like to be Dan Dennett. No, right? I don't agree with that. You think I can know fully, thoroughly exactly what it's like to be you? In principle, sure. And what would that consist of? Me reading a lot of your descriptions of your well, because I mean, if I if if there were some yeah. machine that could magically transport me into your frame of reference so long as I felt like me looking at the world through your frame of reference you through your you know perceptual lenses I I wouldn't know what it was like to be you that would be like me you know I mean yeah. then, and that and that's why a lot of us think consciousness is this inherently private thing that is well, just well, not amenable to scientific analysis yeah, in the way that a grain of sand the thing about a grain of sand whatever it the extent to which we can know it, you and I can know it equally. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's not true of your consciousness. Well, it's it's um, uh, it's circumstantially true that I know a lot more about what it's like to me, me than you do because I hang around with me all the time. And I'll uh, go further than that and say you are. You. Well, um, no. In fact, is uh, that that's not the point. The point is that. Um, 
uh, somebody else, you know, my wife, say, can know things about what, it, what it's like to be me that would never occur to me to reflect on, but she's right, I'm sure. And, and uh, if, it's a horrible thought, if a team of observers, they didn't just wire up my brain, but they hung around and asked me questions and watched and saw how I reacted to everything, and they were to study me much more intensively than I could ever study myself. They'd know more about what it's like to be me than I did. They could write. They could write a. They could. They could write a, a better uh, encyclopedia of what it's like to be Dan Dennett than I could. Well. And they'd be getting at the innermost me. Now, well, they now the idea. It. The idea that you just can't do that. Hmm. Well. So people say, but I'm not, I just don't believe it. Now they can describe patterns in your behavior you're not aware of, even internal dynamics you're not aware of, but yeah. they can never know what it's like to be you the way you can know what it's like to be you. Says you. Yeah. Um, but but, but I, I, don't, I don't take that as an axiom. I don't take that as, as a premise. And I think that, that the fact that philosophers in the past have tended to do that is is a, a fascinating fact, but but it doesn't persuade me that they were right. Let me let me. This is a final a final quote of yours that I'll try to um, to throw in your face and, and um, defy you to justify having. So far, I've failed uh, to get you to capitulate, and I don't I don't think this is going to work either. To be perfectly honest, but uh, this is, you're talking about Mysterians. Mm -hmm. Some Romantics, the philosopher Owen Flanagan calls them the new Mysterians and as you subsequently said, I am kind of a mysterian, have advanced the claim that there is an insurmountable barrier to the brain's understanding of its own organization. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what I believe. I believe I can understand my brain's physical organization completely, and I can understand your brain's physical organization completely in principle. Mm -hmm. I believe that consciousness is something more than the physical organization of the brain. And again, I'm not saying that the physical organization of the brain doesn't account completely mm. for subjective experience. I'm just saying subjective experience is not the same. And, and we've already kind of established oh, I, one. I, we can I, look at the organization of your brain. Everyone yeah. can gather around and look at it. We yeah. would not know what it's like to be you after we had well, done that. There's a passage in your book where you say um, that the, the more uh, Dennett and others um, say that consciousness is just an event going on in the brain, the more I come to realize that what they're really saying is that consciousness doesn't exist. Yeah, I, it's a footnote of, of my book. It's, it's a in, footnote. It's in non-zero, but, yeah. um, but it's, it's true that when I read quotes like the one I just read where you, where you seem to equate knowing about the consciousness of a being with knowing the organization of its brain, uh, that I, I do start suspecting that. And, and you say things like consciousness is, you've said things to me like consciousness is the brain. Well, or consciousness is the state of the brain. Well, if consciousness is the state of the brain, why come up with another word for it? I mean, I, I think we can talk about the state of my, the engine of my car, and I don't, and given, and, and if you said, well, let's use the word consciousness <laughs> to mean that, I'd say, what do we need with a new word? I mean, it's. We, we invent words for states and powers all the time. Uh, Fine, but if you think you're not yeah, adding yeah. any meaning, I see. Oh well, we're certainly we're adding meaning because it's it's the it's the functionality and the organization of all of those states that makes the difference. And we can we can talk about which events you're conscious of and which you're not. Of course, we can say what difference that makes. We can talk about the 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 efficacy, the functional roles that conscious events play that unconscious events don't. There's a, a there's a lot of it's a very useful term. If you understand, if you don't define it in such a way that you, you whisk it off the stage of functionality